the Flyers season, PT. The 50th season of Flyers hockey that was supposed to be such a special season of Flyers hockey. It's not going that way. Sam Carcitti from the Inquirer jumping on board with us from Minnesota where Sam, it has a feeling of a season that, um, well, is over. Wasted, yeah. Yeah, it, it uh, you know, it's all over, but uh, mathematically it's not, but uh, realistically it is. I mean, this team would probably have to win nine games out of the ten to uh, to have any kind of a chance. So uh, uh, the odds are obviously against that, and uh, it's not going to happen. And, uh, you know, they uh, they only have themselves to blame. They had a, an opportunity. A lot of the teams in front of them have struggled and have not played great, have not broken ahead of the pack, but the Flyers, especially in two of the last three games, I thought they were listless, played in an uninspired game in New Jersey last week, lost 6-2. And then last night, uh, you know, faced a Winnipeg team that uh, was really beat up, had five defensemen missing because of injuries, had three AHL call-ups, one who was making his NHL debut, and another who was playing in only his second NHL game. And they faced a goalie, Hutchinson, who uh, had not started a game in over two months. So if ever a team was going to break out of it offensively, last night was the night. And, you know, they really didn't muster much of an offense, and uh, – they struggled, and, uh, you know, as a result, they're still seven points out with 10 to go, and uh, the countdown has begun. Uh, and as you tweeted today, I guess some guys took some offense to what was written. You know, some guys not talking. Uh, you know, it's a little late in the season to take offense to it, it seems, Sam. Yeah, you know, and uh, <laughs> we have to have a thick skin because uh, it, it's kind of amazing. You know, you, you write hundreds and hundreds of positive stories, and, you're, and you write one that – you know, and I stand by the story. I, I said they have not played with much heart in two of the last three games, and a couple guys got offended by it. And and uh, in a way, it was nice to see that they cared that much because you know the actions on the ice. I, I you know I, I'm just uh, astounded uh, by the way they have played in, in two of the last three games. I thought they played well against Carolina, and and they had a struggle to win that game, but not because of the effort. They played real well and, and fired a lot of shots. And, and had the puck down Carolina's end, but in in the other two games they have not. And with uh, you know the playoffs hanging, their playoff chances hanging by a thread. You know they had to go out there and and uh, uh, really lay it on the line, play with desperation. I thought it was good that Steve Mason yesterday uh, really uh, laid it on the line and said, "Hey, we're not playing with desperation. We have to be hungrier out there." And and uh, you know he 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 spoke the truth. And uh, it's going to be anxious. I'm anxious to see how they respond tomorrow against a really good Minnesota Wild team. You tweeted also that uh, you think it'll be good to get this season over with, but that it's time to break up this core. It's not working. Can they? Can they make something happen to make break up this core? You got some no moves. You got some bad deals. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm not suggestion they break the entire core as uh, somebody tweeted back to me you know well, why would you get rid of your all your good players but I, I I wouldn't be adverse to you know trading maybe one of the core you know whether it's a Braden Shen or a Sean Couture whomever it is uh, you know I, I just think sometimes you get a little stale and the, to me they appear a little stale right now and and uh, you know it, it just seems like the make of the team for whatever reason is not working. Now, you can say that they don't have enough talent. Uh, you can say that, uh, uh, you know, they're a couple of years away before some of these young guys like Konechny and Provo really are big factors. And some of the other guys that are in the AHNL, guys like Sandheim and Sam Moran and, and um, you know, even Oscar Lindblom, who is in Europe now, he'll probably be here next year. So you have to give it a little bit of, a, uh, of time. That said, I, I wouldn't mind if they broke up the core and, and traded one of them and, uh, you know, got a different type player here. It, it seems like they have a lot of muckers, a lot of grinders, and it, it seems like they, they need a natural score. I'm not too sure uh, they have that right now. They need another natural score, a guy that can, you know, give you 30 goals, uh, you know, 25 to 30 goals. They have that in Wayne Simmons, but uh, you need somebody else that's going to be uh, – a dependable score. They just do not have enough scores right now. Sam Carcini with us as he's on the Flyers road trip. They play in Minnesota next. And Sam, uh, Mike and I have gone back and forth. And a lot of people, like I was watching the game last night at a local establishment, 
And somebody said, well, why can't they get rid of Giroux? And I've gone back and forth with Mike on that no-move clause. Is there any way they could get rid of Claude Giroux with, short of him saying, yes, I agree to go somewhere else? No, no. I mean, if he agrees, obviously they can. But, uh, um, you know, and I'm not <laughs> – I'm not one that is down is as down on Giroux as a lot of people are. You know, the the guy has had some injury problems, and, and uh, uh, but the guy does lay it on the line. He does care. I talked to him at length today. He he really does care. Uh, you know, sometimes it may not look that way, but uh, he, he I really had an impassioned off the record uh, conversation with him today, and it, it really breaks him up that this team. Looks like he's not going to make the playoffs. I mean, this this guy uh, he eats, sleeps, and drinks hockey. He he loves the game. He loves the playoffs. And uh, Claude Giroux is, is not the problem on this team. I, let me just put it that way. Right, and that was a conversation I had with a gentleman last night where he said, well, he shouldn't be the C, and I said there's a lot of things that go into a captaincy that fans don't see. It's not just how many points he finishes with, and then the fact that he did uh, kind of come out, Sam, a little bit and sort of admit he's not maybe 100% back from that injury. This gentleman I spoke to also got into it with me about Val Valtteri Philpola, and why are we spending more money? Uh, do you buy or sell Hextall's reasoning on the fact that they can get him for another year and you couldn't get a guy at that price for that piece? Yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm not so sure on that. I, I uh, uh, Does he improve the team? Yes. But is there somebody else out there? Uh, as you know, he has a no-trade clause, which means he is part of the Flyers next year. They have to protect him. And I'm not so sure that was the way to go. Um, you know, I, personally, I would have rather have had that $5 million and put that towards another player, uh, You know, a, a guy who's more of a game changer. Pimple's a nice player, don't get me wrong. But uh, if you could use that $5 million and, and maybe try to entice a, a, an Oshi here who just scored his 30th goal and his price just keeps going higher and higher. And, of course, the reason I mention him is he played for Dave Haxtell at North Dakota. And, uh, you know, they have a relationship. And, and I thought they might have, a, a you know, uh, a decent chance to bring him in here. Uh, now I'm not so sure they're going to have enough money under the cap because of the $5 million with Phil Pelot. I mean, they have a lot of guys they have to sign. They have to probably get another goalie. And, and Shane Gosses is going to get a nice raise. And, and on and on. There's several other guys, too, that are going to get raises. So, um you know, it, they may not have too much to spend on a free agent. You know, they might have five, six million dollars, which, uh, you know, a guy like Oshie is probably going to command more than that. So, uh, uh, to answer your question, um, I would rather have uh, picked up a draft pick uh, in the trade for Mark Strait, another draft pick, instead of Phil Pelow. It just it gave you it gives you more options, I think, down the road. Uh, but they made the move. They're committed to it. Philpool is a, a good player, solid player. Uh, but, again, I, I just would rather have seen them get younger instead of uh, bringing in a guy who's going to be 33 years old and, you know, is, is towards the tail end of his career. Before we go, let's get your thoughts on the goalie situation because I know you had respect for Steve Mason sort of calling his teammates out last night, but uh, fans uh, all around are trying to figure out What's the goalie situation moving forward? Who do you think they'll protect? Who's going to get exposed and maybe end up playing in Las Vegas next year? How do the Flyers look goaltender-wise going forward in Sam Carcini's mind? Yeah, to be honest with you, I don't think they even know. Uh, you know, I mean, I've talked to Ron Hextall about it, and, and he said, uh, you know, all this does by signing Michael Neuberth is gives us an option. Now we have two players to choose from as to whom they want to protect. Uh, you know, I, I thought it was real curious, Pete, the way they handled Anthony Stolarz. He was here for uh, six weeks or so while, while Michael Norbert was out. He only started twice. He only got the four games. Tony did really well. He's the one, if you think way back, he's the one that started their 10-game winning streak by beating Calgary. He's the one in his last start, and his only other start, he had a shutout in Detroit. And, uh, you know, they started Mason, I believe, was 23 out of 25 games. And, and uh, there was even a game where he was injured, injured his hand. And uh, they had a game two days later, and he was back in there. It, to me, it just didn't make sense. You really wanted to find out about Anthony Stolarz. And, 
And whether you should protect him or not, uh, I hear whispers that they're not as high on him as they are, you know, several other guys in the system. Uh, so uh, I'll tell you what, that, to me, it's right now it's flip a coin as to which player they protect and which one uh, they expose to Vegas. And, of course, with McFay, the uh, the GM in Vegas, he has a history with Michael Neubert because he was in Washington when uh, Newby was in Washington. And uh, he saw the good and bad with Michael Neubert. He, he saw him play pretty well, and he also saw all the injuries. So it's going to be interesting to see if uh, that history um, makes them interested in, in uh, selecting him if, in fact, he is uh, exposed. So, uh, uh, but again, I, I, if I had to guess right now, I don't think they will re-sign Steve Mason. I think they'll go in a different direction, whether it's signing a free agent like a Ben Bishop or somebody like that. Um, but I'm not so sure. I'm not convinced that they will go with both Neubert and Stolars next year if both of them are, are still here uh, and one of them isn't uh, picked by Vegas. Sam Carcitti from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Flyers take on the uh, Minnesota Wild tomorrow night. Uh, mathematically, yes. Realistically, no. Sam, appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks for the time, guys. I appreciate it. Have a good one. You Thanks, too. Sam. Flyers beat writer for the Phil-